Okay, so uh, this video is going to be about um, creating a um, assembly drawing, or at least the basic pieces of an assembly drawing, um, adding a parts list, balloons, views, things like that. Um, so what I've done to this point um, is I have an assembly here. It's like a little stool. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make at least the beginning of an assembly drawing for this stool. Okay, so all I've done is started a new drawing. I have a format that I've created. Um, and we're going to first add some views in. <clears throat> I'm going to go general view. I'm going to place it, and then I'm going to try and get at least two views um, that will show all of the different um, components I want to show. So one that's a little big. I'm going to change the scale down here. 0.5 yeah that's pretty good and then I'm gonna create a little projection view off the side here that looks pretty good move this maybe down a little bit uh, might be a little big but we'll see what happens and then I'm gonna add one more in up here I'm gonna put a nice little ISO <clears throat> shrink it down a little bit we'll mess around with that later all right so then I'm going to pick all my views by holding control and left selecting them and go to properties. I'm going to put all my views on no hidden, not like dimmed, go to rounded surface too. Make full space there. Okay. Now the first thing I need to do um, is I need to create a parts list. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to table. And yes, you can create parts lists that automatically fill in the different boxes and things for you. Um, those are called automatic bill of materials. Um, you can see them under like quick tables. A lot of them are in there. But we're going to actually just manually create one. All right. So for this assembly, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces. All right. So I know that I need one, two, three, four, five, six seven because I'm also going to need a title row at the top <clears throat> and for this one we're going to create a very basic parts list so we're going to make uh, item number quantity and then a little title or description um, of what it is and actually you know what let's go four we'll even put a drawing number in there too so I'm going to pick uh, four by seven you can see as I move down it increases my table so I'm going to go four by seven I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to click and what's going to happen is I'm going to get a table that um, has four equal columns and then um, seven one uh, letter high rows. All right. So what I like to do first, um, and by the way, notice that I'm on the table tab still. If I go to the layout tab, you notice how it doesn't highlight this because these up here actually act as filters. So if I go to a table, it's going to filter to different table components so I can pick these different areas. Okay, so if you find at some point you go to edit your table and you can't click in the box um, or you can't click the box, it might be because you're not on the table tab. You can still do it from different ways, um, but I like to just be on the tab. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so our first um, our first column is going to be number. Um, I always put no with a period, um, or you could put like a number symbol like that if you wanted. Um, but for some reason, everywhere I've ever worked, is always put no. Um, and then I'm going to put the other one. I'm going to go quantity QTY. Whoop, missed my T. QTY. Next one. Uh, will be drawing number and then the next one will be title slash description okay um, and this could be depending on your company um, any number of different things um, I've worked for a bunch of companies that all different stuff some have like process codes and all these other things that um, are associated with them um, but we're just going to create a real basic one here Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to go one, I'm going to move down to the next one, two, go down to the next one, three, click, down to the next one, four, click, go down to the next one, five. And all I'm doing is when you click outside the box here, 
it locks in what you've typed in. Okay, so I'm going to actually go in order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because that's really, really nice. And um, what I have here for item number one is I have, and item number one is the top of my stool here. There's only one of them, so the quantity is one. Okay, for number two, which is my little side plates there, looks like a little off center. I have to fix that. Um, one, two of them. Okay, so for the next one, the quantity is going to be two. Um, and again, if you do an automatic bill of materials, it's going to automatically fill these things in. Um, of course, the downside of it is that if I work in a company and not everyone knows how to use that automatic bill of materials, uh, my uh, parts list is going to be incorrect uh, because people won't fill in the right information. So then we'll go to item three. What is that one? That is our side plate, and there's two of them. So we're going to go two. Now we're going to go to item four. Item four is the legs. All right, and we have one, two item fours. Boom, and then we're going to go to five. Five is the center brace there. So for five, there is one. And then for six, that's the other type of leg. And that's going to be two. Okay. So in the interest of it's kind of being consistent, we're going to go in here and we're going to type in SC007 dash 001 for the first one. Next one's going to be SC007 dash 002. And this would be whatever your drawing numbers are. Uh, SC007 dash 003. I'm just moving my way down here. 07 dash 004. C007 05. And this is just assembly that I've created years ago that I found for this video. Um, so it works pretty well, has a bunch of different parts. So I'm actually going to come up with some names, but if this was a um, contract I had for someone, I'd probably have some assigned names for the different components. Um, so the first one, I'll have to highlight them to remind myself. So the first one's going to be top, maybe top plate or something. You know. Let's just call it top. And then for number two, that's our side plate. So we'll call that, oh, I click outside there first. Side, number three, we'll call that, I don't know what to call that guy. Number three is going to be, I don't know, skirt. Um, number four, we'll call that leg one. Number five is the center brace. And then the other one is the other legs. So we'll call it leg two, just for the interest of having stuff in all these boxes. Okay, now the next thing you're going to want to do before you start putting your balloons in. Um, is actually go through um, and resize these rows, okay? And one of the ways you can do that is I can either hover over it, hold right click and go to pick from list, which will give me this nice little list that I can go cell, I can go row, go column, or I can go the whole table. The other thing you can do, um, and I've used Creo and you know Pro Engineer when it was previously called that a number of different times, um for a long long time create a lot of assemblies um i really like the right click option so if you keep right clicking it'll actually flip through all the different things that would be in that list if you get a good handle on this you can really quick go right click right click Oop, of course because i'm trying to do it i can't but we go right click right click you see that i'm right on my column now and i can now left click it and have the column or if you don't want to deal with that right click Pick from list, and I want a column, and then hit OK. Now you've got your column selected. After it's selected, hold right click, OK, and then go to customize. Oop, sorry, wrong place. Hold right click, go to properties, my mistake. Customizes for a little bit more intricate stuff. Um, now for my width, what I like to do, instead of worrying about the inches, I worry about the number of characters. I have one, two, three characters is the maximum in that whole row right now. So I'm going to go three, and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see 
it's going to slide the whole thing over um, to be the right size. Now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use my right click this time. So right click, right click, left click. I know it's tough. You use it a lot, you'll get a good handle on it. It's much faster. I'm going to go properties again. Drag that over so you can see it. I'm going to make that one three as well. QTY is the widest thing I have. And for this one, this will be tough. I'll have my biggest one is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I think I'm going to go 10 there. So I'm going to go right click, right click, select with my left click, properties. I'm going to leave it at 10. That works pretty good. And then for this one, I'll do the pick from list again so you can see that. Hold right click, pick from list. Uh, column, OK. And then I'm going to right click and go to properties. And for this one, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. 17. Now for a title and description, that's always going to be your longest box because you could have all different names and links and stuff of the names. So since I have 17, I'm going to go with like 25. See what that looks like. When I hit enter, you can see it moves right out there. It looks pretty good. I want a lot of space there. So now I can hit OK. Now if you are OK with everything being left justified, you could leave this just as it is. Me personally, I like to have things centered. Um, that's just me. So I want to select my whole table now. You could either hold right click, go pick from list, pick table and hit OK. Or I can right click, right click, right click till my whole table is highlighted, then left click. Now I can go to properties. Oop, went to the wrong place, sorry. Now I can hold right click, go to textile. It's amazing, I rehearsed this stuff beforehand. I still end up clicking the wrong thing. Um, and in horizontal, I'm going to go to center. That's going to center it horizontally. And then vertical for the up and down, I'm going to go middle. All right. And I can hit apply to see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. It's pretty easy to read. Looks nice and, um, nice and balanced. And now I can move this right down like this. Or if you prefer, a lot of times I'll put it like on top of my um, box there, on top of my title block. I'm just going to put it right here. Um, now, the next part. I have all of my parts established. Now, I need to create some balloons. Now, the create balloons up here is utilized for um, automatic bill of materials. We're not going to do that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to create a reference balloon because then you can create as many as you want. There's no limit. You can type whatever the heck you want it to say in there. So I'm going to go balloon up here, still under table, by the way. Balloon up here, balloon note. Now I'm going to customize what my balloon note looks like. So I'm going to go with leader because I want a leader pointing to my balloon. And then I'm going to hit make note. Now, since it's bolded, I can middle click or you can just click it. All right, now here's how balloon notes work. I keep moving this stuff over here. Um, I zoom in, I pick what I want my balloon to point to. Okay, so for me, when I'm, when I'm calling out, um, things on an assembly drawing, what I'm typically trying to do is I'm trying to figure out where is it where my balloon can point to that's really obvious. It's only pointing to one and only one um, piece. So for my top, here's a really good one. Pick right here, left pick it, move out where you want your balloon to be, middle click. Now that is item number one. So I'm going to type one, I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to hit enter again. Now I have a balloon. Now for item two, okay, which is our side, which is this piece, maybe I want to call it out on the actual surface. I don't have to use a leader. I could use a leader with a little uh, filled in dot to show that I'm pointing to a surface. So I'm going to middle click again or click make note. Either one works. I'm going to hover over that surface, click, move up, middle click, number two, hit enter, hit enter again. You see that it gives me a little bit different one, okay? Now, I can go around and call out all these different things, um, but I'm not going to go that far because, you know, why? You see how this works. Um, you can rewind the video if you like. So I'm going to hit done return. I'm going to show you one other trick that I really, really like. Okay. Um, so once we have a balloon, a bunch of balloons, imagine there was, you know, 10 of these or so. Instead of having them go all up and down, 
like this and look really, really sloppy and messy, what I like to do is create a snap line and then I'll pick my edge of my view. Okay. I'll middle click and then I'll say, I want that snap line to be, I don't know, one and a half inches away. I'll hit enter. I only want one snap line. I hit enter again. Now, when I hit done, I can pick my balloon and hover over the balloon. I can drag it down and put it right on that snap line. So this is really nice if you have a really big assembly with a lot of parts. You can put all your balloons in a nice, neat row on the side, on the side, because I can create these snap lines anywhere I want. I can put one here. I can put one here and here. And now I have all these snap lines to snap to. Okay? Um, so, in the interest of keeping this video nice and short, um, instead of going through and making all these balloons, this is what I would do. You know, I'd call some of these out down here, right? This leg is much more obvious down here than it is if I pull it out over here. You got to think about that, right? Because the people who are using your assembly to put things together may have no familiarity with it. So if you don't take that time to think about, hey, where can I call this out and where can I point to it where it's really clear for someone who's never seen this before, okay? then that's your own fault if something gets put together incorrectly. That's part of being a good designer, part of being a good engineer, part of being a good drafter. Um, so this is how you create a basic assembly drawing. Um, once you call everything out, um, you end up with a nice little layout like this. You got your parts list down here and you're good to go.